everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and it's been a long time. Um, I've been uh, feeling under the weather a little bit, and then um, also I'm doing kind of a fun project. It's different. Um, it's I think you guys are going to be happy with it in the end, but both my last two projects were really time consuming because I was having to learn a whole bot, a whole bunch. So this is going to be the uh, Japan album and um, Vagabond in Japan, that is. And um, it's also going to have a nice storage box. And that's kind of where the surprise lies is in the storage box. But right now we're going to construct the album. Turns out it's an album that, um, or the way I've designed it, um, I don't already have a base album built for this. We're going to start there. So I'm going to start by joining two 12 by 12 pieces of paper. And I'm going to show you a, a simple way to find the grain of the paper is to hold it on both edges and then just see which one gives you the biggest valley. And it's this way. So that means my grain is running up and down. And that, you know, helps having your grain run up and down helps on your spine. I always go ahead and wrap it with the book binding tape anyway, but it goes a long way to helping um, when you wrap your spine for it not to crack. <clears throat> and you'll probably have noticed over the years of building books, and I keep shuffling my paper, sorry, um, that when they're laid out like this and you're wrapping it this way and wrapping it this way, one of the two sides comes over really smoothly while the other one has these little bubbles that you really kind of have to work out. Bubbles or creases, buckles is probably a better way to put it. If it's buckling, it means you're going against the grain. And unfortunately, it only goes one way, so you have to choose which side you want to go with. So I want to go with a go on the grain across the book because that's where the most of the movement is, is across the book. There's not a whole lot happening up and down. It's across from the two outside edges of the book across the spine. So that's my um, thought process behind working with the grain and having it go in this direction. <clears throat> I think, you know, there's certain parts of the book where it matters more and matters less. I think the more wear and tear you're going to have on a hinge, the more you want to try to work with the uh, grain of the paper. I'm just going to line it up on. <laughs> I have a fan going in here because it's blazing hot as, and it's blowing my papers around as well as me feeling a little clumsy today. So I'm just going to join these two and then we're going to add our chipboard and I like to hold my corner down, hold the rest of it off, use that as a pivot point and then I get a pretty straight seam. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not because it is going to wrap around the paper. So as I was mentioning before, I don't already have an album this size so we are building a brand new album. And its measurements are going to be nine and a half by seven and a half, nine and a half by seven and a half, and it's going to be landscape by two and a half inch spine. It's going to have four pages. Sorry, I was fumbling around looking for my pencil. Here it is. Oops. Actually, this is not what I want. This is what I want. <clears throat> this one doesn't shift. I can think about this. I think it's going to be enough. I hadn't laid in my pieces. So it's going to be 12 and 12 is 24. 9 and 9 is 18. Yeah, barely. Mm, barely. That's pretty tight. But I am going to make it work with the two 12 by 12s. So I'm not going to add in the third piece of paper. So the sides here might be a little less than what we're used to, one and a half inch or one inch. But I think we can make it work. It'll probably be more like uh, three, maybe five eighths. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm looking to center it here. <clears throat> And again, the spine is two and a half. I don't think I mentioned it yet. Two and a half by seven and a half. Two and a half by seven and a half. Did I say that right? That's the outside dimensions. The inside page dimensions, yeah, two and a half by seven and a half. The inside page dimensions are going to be, uh, pocket pages are going to be uh, seven by nine, a half inch smaller. Okay. Okay, now we've got our two 
main elements, the front and back cover. And these are seven and a half by nine. Seven and a half by nine. That's not right. Gosh, darn it. Right, I panicked. I wrote seven and a half by nine, and it should be seven and a half by nine and a half. And that's the kind of week I've had where I haven't been able to hold thought or get, I don't know, anything done. So the um, chipboard pieces are seven and a half by nine and a half. And then again, our pocket pages are going to be a finished seven by nine, but we'll work on that next. Okay, you'll need two front and back covers. I haven't uh, done a video of a, a base build in a very long time because I have so many of them out there. I just didn't have the size. This size was determined by the box. Let me get my spacer that it's going to be housed in. And when I start to build that and go over the dimensions with you, you'll understand why it turned out the way it did. Where's my spacer? I can't seem to find it, but this happens to be the right space which is about one eighth, which is also equivalent to two of these stacked on top of each other. So a lot of times I make a jig out of the chipboard that I'm using. I take two strips, glue them together, and that makes roughly an eighth inch. It's not perfect, but it's right there and it's based on the chipboard itself. But I've worked with this chipboard long enough to know that it's, it's pretty accurate. Two of these stacked on top of each other makes an eighth of an inch. And you want that space to help keep it from buckling um, or tearing. Okay, so because we're doing this for the first time in a long time, I take the top strip off and the right hand strip off because I'm left-handed and I wanna work this way and not over my tape. So if you're right-handed, you might wanna do it the opposite way it's, it's not a big deal, it's just a simple tip so you're not running your hand or your tool back over your tape. So something else um, I want to talk to you guys about, and I'll be introducing this in this video for the first time, is I'm going to have two uh, indicators in the nomenclature. So when you look at the title of this video, it's going to have... First, the page that you're working on, and not just this part, but the rest of the uh, album itself, the page that I'm working on, but it's also going to indicate the build sequence. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, kindly, one of our viewers pointed out to me that um, because I build in a different sequence, then the pages are actually revealed, so page one, two, three through eight, but I often build my albums from the inside out. So if you want to build your album the same way I do, which, which means you'll be cutting through your designer paper the same way I do in the same sequence, you will want to build, uh, construct your album off the build number. But if you just want to go page one through eight, then you'll go off the page number. So it's a little bit confusing, but I just want to give that little extra piece of information in case you want to do it a different way. And I don't know how much of a difference it'll make, but I do think it will help with some folks. Okay, so now we're ready to start trimming this, and I'm going to go over that same thing again um, on the uh, Vagabond in Japan because a lot of times people see the walkthrough first and don't see any of these base builds. Um, so I wanted to share that information for it. If, when you see that in the title, you'll know now what it means. So why do I build from the center out? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is I want to distribute my pattern evenly, patterns, plural, throughout the album. I don't want to have all the beautiful paper front loaded and then the second half of the album look a little dull. So from a planning perspective, I find it quite useful. From a build perspective, I don't think it matters as much um, because, some, because I've done that planning for you. Um, the other 
reason I do it is because of paper planning itself. As I go from the center to the outsides, I don't want all my interactive elements to be on the first three pages, and then everything has to be a pocket or a single flap on the second half of the album because I've run out of paper. So it's a way to distribute some of the interactive elements throughout the album so that it's not front-loaded. I find that to be very helpful, but that's just the way I plan. I think every single person that you learn from has a different you know, view on that and different take and look at it completely differently. Um, I find that that works for me. <clears throat> okay, and I'm using the spacer again, which is 1 8th. Uh, when I trim my corners off, I wanna make sure I have enough excess that it's gonna come up and over the chipboard, which is 1 16th of an inch, which is times two, one eighth of an inch, right? So it should have plenty to come up and over the corner and not leave any chipboard exposed. I'm not really concerned about getting a right angle. We're gonna fold everything over and then it's gonna get covered up anyway. All you're gonna see in the end is a really tiny piece of mitered corner. Oops. I'm not going to glue over. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something. I can demonstrate now what, what it looks like when you're going against the grain and with the grain. So I'm going to fold. Ah, cut, I haven't done that in a long time. Cut myself with a paper. I'm going to um, burnish and work this into place. And I'm going to do the same thing across the width. And then I'm going to bring it up and show you how different the edges look. So remember the way I laid the grain down was going consistent with the spine of the book, not the length of the book or width of the book. So this is what the edge of going with the grain looks like. Look how nice and smooth that is. I haven't put tape on it or anything. This is the edge going against the grain. You see these little bit of bubbles? That's where it's fighting against the grain. Now you can smooth that over once you get your tape on and work it with your bone folder, but you can visually see that it's just a little bit bumpy on this side as compared to this side where it's just completely smooth. No bumps. It's a little bit wider than my mat, which makes it a little unruly. Okay, well, let's get some tape down here. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Scrap and Create. Uh, the way we organize our projects is um, by the paper collection that's in the project. So if you look for Vagabond in Japan, this project will come up. If you select its playlist and then click the Show All Videos, it will present to you the list of videos that it takes to build that project from the base album through the finished um, project. The first video is always the walkthrough. The second one is gonna do what we're doing right now, build the base. The third one adds each page and its designer, its interactive elements and designer pages so that you can build a project on your own. The other thing I wanna let you know is if you find a project that you like on our YouTube channel, you'll always have access to it. It's always gonna be free and we're never gonna take it down unless YouTube does something. Um, we have, we are committed to leaving any finished project online. So you can take two days or two years to finish a project. It's completely up to you. We won't abandon you. Of course, not everybody lives in the United States, but those of you that do, we would appreciate it if you took a minute, went over to our 
shop at www.scrapandtrade.com where you can find a lot of these projects, all of these products um, for sale. So, any orders? We do our best to get our orders out within 48 hours and except for when we have a pre-order week come through, that's pretty true. So, we do not sit on your orders. Once, uh, if the product's here, it usually gets turned around in 20 or 48 hours. Now, having said that, coming up in the next three weeks, we are going to have some limited staff. Folks are taking some long-awaited vacations, traveling to see family and friends. So there'll be a slight delay, um, and then um, we'll pick right back up to our normal pace of delivering about every about shipping within 48 hours. I said delivering, but I, I can't control the delivery. I can only control the shipping. <laughs> So it will be shipped in about 48 hours, as long as it doesn't have what we call a pre-order item. If, it, if it's a pre-order item, it means we don't have it to ship, so we can't we can't get it out in 48 hours. Okay, <clears throat> all of that's detailed on the pre-order items that you may put in your cart. There's a little tag that says. This is a pre-order item. We hold all items until everything can ship at once. And then we also give you an expected uh, uh, shipment date based on what the vendor is telling us, the, the paper manufacturer. Which, by the way, since COVID, and I'm sure you guys have experienced this in lots of things, has been all over the place. Um, one, one of our... Uh, manufacturers is in Italy and another uh, ships out of Budapest so that's Chabella and Stamperia and we've had some uh, delays in their pre-orders but interestingly enough even Graphic 45 which is a United States company that does its printing here in the United States so even they're experiencing delays um, and maybe it's just they're not getting paper in to print on I don't know so we do our best to keep you informed. All right, so you can see that I've added uh, a layer of tape to the edge of all the chipboard and then also to the edge of the paper. So when we fold it over, this is gonna meet the bottom half and this is gonna reach over the top. So it's gonna make it nice and secure. Also, when you're wrapping your spine, you always want to start in the spine and work out. You don't want to bulge in the middle. So if you have any excess paper that's unruly, you want it to go to the outside of the book and not toward your spine. You can, you can hide a multitude of scents just by pushing them to the edge. Now here's a better example of how bumpy the edge can look when you're going against the spine. Now, when I get done burnishing it, you won't notice it, but it's, it's just telling you that the paper's really fighting to go around that corner. It's not, it doesn't want to do that naturally. That's going to become more important when I go over um, the second half of this project, which is building the box. We're going to do something interesting with the lid, where knowing the um, grain of your chipboard is going to be very important. Okay, so I'm pushing this down so that it's going over the chipboard here. So I'm pushing it straight down. Now I'm going to flip it over and see what it looks like. I'm not going to stick it down yet. I'm going to flip it over and look at it. And I feel like that tag is too big. When I mean tag, it's like this. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do to make that look a little more pretty is I'm going to lay my scissor down against the chipboard and trim away from the corner, like so. Tuck that in, and that's gonna make for a much neater, mitered corner. I'm gonna do the same thing. Never cut into your corner, because you could overcut. Lay your scissor against the wall of the outside chipboard and trim away from it. Okay, I'm gonna lay this down and show you the result. Two pretty 
good mitered corners, right? It completely covered the chipboard, but you have this nice seam here. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Can't get under the, there we go. I was having a hard time. Now again, I'm turning this so that my, I'm looking straight at this. I'm folding it down and I'm seeing that tag on both sides. Let's lay the scissor against this page and trim away. Repeat it on the other side. Oops. Good enough. Now we're going to lay it down. Looks beauteous. And I cut a little deeper than I would have liked. It doesn't matter because I'm going to put designer paper over this and it's going to come all the way out to a sixteenth of an inch. So there's absolutely no risk of this piece of chipboard being exposed. The designer paper is going to come about that deep. Okay, so that's it for our cover. So we have two main elements left. So again, this is seven and a half by nine and a half by two and a half. Two main elements left to finish this construction is the pocket page which I've already made three of. <clears throat> so there's the three that I've constructed. And then this is the last one we're gonna do together. Now this is, and you're gonna need a total of eight of these. Nine by seven and a half, nine by seven and a half. Score a half inch on the seven and a half inch side. <clears throat> then we're gonna take these two, and apply them together, sandwich them together, and make a pocket page. Everybody does this a little different. Actually, not everybody. I think there's just a couple of methods. There's this one and the other one where you have a flat one and you score a half inch on both sides and then you're just laying the top on. I like this better. I don't even know why. <laughs> it just works for me, so I haven't changed. Okay, now, what I want to do is, that's the wrong corner. I want to peel up this corner. Everybody does it a little differently. So here's my tape on this side. I'm going to take this corner. I'm going to apply it here. I'm going to use that as a pivot point until I feel good about laying it down. But what I did is picked up the wrong corner. Um, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, one way is going to feel a little more natural than the other. And I feel going toward the left feels more natural for me. And right now I'm just stalling and blabbing because I lost my pick tool. So I'm just going to use a different one, not my favorite one. It's so fine that it usually gets under the tape and the backing. And I just had it. You guys saw me using it. it. Makes me feel like a big dodo. Anyway, so I'm going to match this corner to this corner. Then I'm just going to use that as a pivot point. So what I'm looking for is I want these two edges to be you know, meet up nice and neat. And then I also want to make sure that none of this tape is going to be exposed when I pull the tape off. Now, because of the width of this, it, there is a chance for this to drift. So I like to place my hand over it. So I remove any chance of that. Now we're going to do the other side. And this one's a little easier because you're just going to close it <clears throat> and you want to run your hand over it because you don't want your pocket page to bubble. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So you want your pocket page to lay relatively flat and not have too much of this going on. So that's the pocket page and I rushed through that I know but I think most of you have built a pocket page before so you're going to need a total of four of those. So again, the measurements are nine by seven and a half. You're going to score a half inch on the seven and a half inch side. You're going to do that eight times to make a total of four pocket pages. So the last main element of the book is going to be the hinge. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've got a little organized, so I'm ready to, to go here. So I have a piece of paper laying in my scoreboard that is six and seven eighths tall, 11 inches across. So 
what you're going to, so I took an eight and a half by 11 and trimmed it down to six and seven eighths. So what we're going to do after that is we are going to score across the 11 inch side. You're going to start at two and three quarters and you're going to score every half inch to eight and a quarter. So those measurements are going to be two and three quarters, three and one quarter, three and three quarters, four and one quarter, four and three quarters, five and one quarter, five and three quarters, six and one quarter. Oops, yeah, six and one quarter. Six and three quarters, seven, one quarter, seven and three quarters, eight and one quarter, and that's it. So that is going to give us the, ba the base for our hinge system in the album. So now I've gone ahead and done all these score lines. If you did not keep up with me, there's a banner running across the bottom that's telling you where to score. In addition to that, in the description, there will be a complete list of the size and score lines for everything in the base album build. Not just this, but everything else. So you can always refer back to that. So the way we make a page, there's two score lines here. They're going to get married together and make a peak. Then we're going to skip one, which is going to become a gusset, and then we're going to create a peak, a gusset, a peak, and a gusset. So let's go ahead and get started by doing the first one. Okay. So there's our first peak. Okay, so the first one, two, three score lines get folded up to make the peak. We're going to skip this, then we're going to do the next two as a peak. So there's the beginning of our next peak, but we have to fold the paper, pinch the paper together, like so. Okay, now we're going to do that across the rest of the album. I'm going to do it without speaking, and then after we're done, I'm going to add the tape. Okay. For some reason I have absolutely no grip tonight. Okay, now we have two gussets and three peaks. We're going to crisp all this up in a minute. And there's our fourth peak. So the outside score lines should be the beginning of the uh, beginning and outside edge of your peaks. Okay. Now I'm going to take my bone folder and just crisp up all these creases. We're going to flip them, go the opposite way. Okay. So there's our, what are called four hinges, and there's our gussets. And that's basically going to be the space between each one of the pocket pages that will allow us to make those pages a little bit bulky with interactive elements without clashing into the, each other. Now, the next thing we're going to do is flip it over, and between, for each of the peaks, we're going to add tape and marry them up so they're permanently joined. I highly recommend using tape here. It's just a lot less messy. There's no bleeding. Um, I just think it's a, it's a better result. So I'm going to add tape and then um, join it. So there's our first one already done. Taped together. So we're going to continue that for the next three. And you really only need to put tape on one side of the peak. 
and then just join it. So there's our two. Okay, now we're going to the third one here. It's our third. It's a valley when you turn it over. There are the three that are done, and here's the last one that needs to be done. See how they're staying together now, nice and crisp. We'll do our last one. We're going to do the same thing we did when we first creased it. We're going to go back over front and back and make sure that tape is burnished well into place. So that was one direction. Now we'll go the other. So here's uh, an important key to building albums and um, just having things work much more in your favor and you don't have to fight so much is making sure that your hinge is straight. And if it's not, knowing that going in so that you can make some corrections as you're installing it. So one of the ways to determine whether or not your hinge is straight is you wanna measure this corner to this corner and do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm gonna pivot this so it's right on my grid line. So I'm looking at this and I can see it's pretty darn close. So I'm gonna to try to find something to point with. So it's even on this side and as it comes across it's laying flat you can see that it's ending here and it's ending here. So in my mind it's off maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So there's two things we can do. We can try to correct it by trimming that off or we can pull it apart ever so slightly to try to get it to line up. And when I say pull it apart, it means we're pulling across these um, peaks. Okay. Now, if you look at, and I just, I didn't pull very hard. If you look at where it's ending there and where it's ending here, it's right on. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do is make sure you actually get it placed in the album straight. So, it makes it a lot easier to get it in the album straight if you know that you've got right angles on your corners, right? So if this had been going in at a slant and you're trying to center this as though it's based on right angles, you're gonna get it off. So the other thing I like to do, and I'm gonna show you this, but I'm not gonna do it right now because I like to put book binding tape on my albums. So I'm gonna do that, is I like to split my page peaks to the left and right because ideally when you get this in right and you lay those last two hinges down, you want to be looking for an equal space between these two score lines. So between this score line and this score line, we're looking to see these two evenly inserted. And you're going to look at that up and down and you're going to tweak this based on that. So that is the best way, in my opinion, to get it in straight. But I am going to share with you some workarounds in the event you don't get it in straight because it happens to all of us, including me. And I'll show you what you can do to, to mitigate that. It's not completely fix it, but it will mitigate the visual of it being slightly askew. So I'm going to set these things aside for now, or at least the cover. Now the next thing we're going to do with our hinge system is we're going to apply double-sided double tape across this whole thing. It's a large 
uh, area to cover tape, but it is the most interactive um, area of your album and it holds the weight of your album. So it's critical that you really use good tape. I wouldn't recommend using glue. It will dry and crack over time. I've never had that happen on um, an album that I use the score tape with. And I'm talking about the brand specifically, score tape brand. Um, and like I said, it's, it's carrying the weight of the album right here on the spine. So it's really important that you get this in uh, with good adhesives. And I, I highly recommend score, score tape brand. There may be other brands that are as good. I don't have personal experience with it, so I won't, um, I, I can't recommend it. I have done hinges with glue and they have failed. I have also done hinges with Joanne or, or Michael's um, cheap double-sided tape, no name, and it has failed. It took about three years, but it failed, so. If you're going to put the effort into making these albums, you want them to stay together. Okay, now I'm just going to uh, go across the rest of this, adding tape. I'm going to pause. When, he, when we get back, it'll be done. Okay, guys, it's time to put our hinge in. Um, as promised, I had gone away and put the adhesive on the whole back thing. So I'm going to show you a technique I've used probably for over a year when I first started making albums. I don't anymore, but I'm going to show it to you just in case we've got some beginners here. Is I'm going to remove the tape from the center of what we're trying to lay down. And if you recall, I've pushed two to the left and two to the right. And we're going to use the edge of those outside hinges to help us center between the score lines. Now, also while I was away, I used my score tool and I gently pushed into. Um, the hinge area, partly because uh, you just need to work that in there. And the other reason is I wanted a more crisp line so that visually when I go to lay this down, it's easier for me to see the edge of those score lines, particularly the edge here. And even using my fingernail helps, but don't push too hard. You don't want to go through your paper. So that gives me a nice uh, clear line that I'm aiming for, for those two corners. So you're going to want to center it up, down, left, right. That's why I only did the center. If worst case scenario, I just lift it back off. That looks a little high. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're in. So now we'll never know if it's perfect until we go to add our pages in. And like I said, in the event that it didn't go in straight, I'm gonna show you how to remediate that. Even if it did go in straight, I'm also gonna go over how to, how to solve it if it did go in slightly askew. And even if it did, it's not gonna be very significant. I can tell just by, well, just by lots of experience doing this. I know this went in pretty straight. But if it didn't, um, and I'm very meticulous about this kind of thing, if you've watched my videos before, and I also am a big firm believer that getting these steps and the paper in straight to begin with goes a long way to making your album look very polished and professional. It also means everything you do, you know, as you're adding to the book is going to be based on this foundation. So we're almost there. Now the way I do my albums now, based on um, feedback from the uh, YouTube community, is I build my base album. I do not add my pages until I've, I'm done decorating them. And the reason you want to do it that way, wow, I'm having a hard time uh, catching this. The reason I do it that way is if you um, build page on page on page, you really start to, to um, have to work with the bulk of the pages that you've already done and all the interactive elements that you've already put into the book and pretty soon you're not on a flat surface at all. Um, it's already bad enough that it has a front and a back. 
but if you're doing front and back on and on the third page it can get a little unwieldy so I'm gonna talk about how to do this but we're not going to actually do it we're gonna wait until they're decorated so this is your pocket page constructed by with two seven and a half by nine inch panels scored at seven and a half inch you're gonna join those two to create a pocket page the pocket page is going to slip over this hinge and that's what's going to adhere it to the book and that's how you that's how you add pages to the book we're not going to do it right now until they're decorated I use tape on my hinge again it is holding the weight of the book don't go cheap here the other reason I use tape on my hinge is there's a product called undo if you make a mistake adding your page and I've done this and one of the mistakes I've made is putting my pages in the album upside down or not in the right order. And the way I design order matters a lot um, because I try to pick a series of patterns and have it on both pages. So if it's not with joined with the page that it was de designed with, it looks a little wonky to me. Um, if you use the score tape and you make a mistake, you can use that undo product that I just shared with you and you can release the tape. You put it on, you give it three or four minutes, and then you can carefully get a spatula tool like this under the edge of your pocket on both sides and lift it out. You can then peel the tape back off, let it dry thoroughly, thoroughly, then reapply tape and add your page again. It will not damage your designer paper. It's amazing. But it only works on tape. It doesn't work on glue. If you put glue here and you make a mistake inserting your pages, you can't, you can't really fix it without tearing it. So this tape that I'm adding on the front and back of each one of these peaks is actually going to be removed after we slip a page over it to hold that page in place. So this tape is really incredibly important. I'm using 3 8 inch tape on a half inch score and that leaves just ever so much between the tape and the bottom of the hinge which you want because if your page is completely on the score line, it won't want to lay down flat. And I'll go over that in greater detail when we add the pages actually to the book. And also in some of my other videos that are base album tutorials, I go over that. So there's lots of tutorials in at Scrap and Create under base tutorials, base album builds. And uh, I go over that. So we've got, I don't know, 6 by 8, 5 by 7, 8 by 10, 8 by 8. I mean, if there's a size, this is the first time I've done one this size, but we have lots to choose from, uh, at least a dozen, I would, I would say, of different various sizes and orientations of um, albums, both portrait, landscape, and square. And I'm sure I go over tips in all of them, but I, I'm not sure I go over all the same tips in each one of them. <laughs> it's more sort of stream of consciousness as I'm building. So, okay. Now for me, my next step is going to be adding what I call book binding tape around here, all the way around to keep this from, actually, I'm, I, I'm not going to do that this time because for the first time ever, I'm using rice paper. So I'm not going to add my book binding tape. I'm going to use rice paper around the hinge because I heard it's magic. <laughs> and I hope it is um, as far as being able to go over hinge and not buckle. And um, that's what we're going to do over the hinge. So that's my current plan. Uh, if I change my mind in the next few minutes, I'll make sure to cover the um, book binding tape install before we move forward. Otherwise, the next time I sit down together, um, we will start decorating our pages. Yay! So the other thing you can do if you want to is go ahead and add a black um, insert here. Don't overlap. Try to just go over the cardstock that's 
not covered so that you have an even playing field. I don't usually do that anymore. I just add my designer paper right to the top, but if you're uncomfortable with that, cut something out that's gonna fit here, just leveling everything up so that when you do apply your designer paper, there's no slight dip where the cardstock is now versus the level of the chipboard. Okay, there we go. And here's our four pocket pages. So in addition to this, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add, are we going to add, yes, we're going to add inserts to each one of these pocket pages and they will be, I have to measure this, this is seven, it's going to be six, how much smaller do I want it? It's going to be six and three quarters. Is that small enough? Mm. Yeah, six and three quarters by nine. So once these are installed, we're going to have an insert that's six and three quarters by nine. And I will also have that in the cut list. If I decide to adjust that slightly, I'll, it'll be noted in the cut list. But I think that's what it's going to be. So it's going to stick out just slightly. And that's fine because we made our cover nine and a half inches. So even if we have a page insert, it's going to cover anything that uh, sticks out of the pocket page. So we're all set. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.